Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is about scaling it's from Mr. Hyatt's book, chapter number 16. And here primarily we'll be discussing example 16.6. So what is scaling? There are two types of scaling and we will understand from this. One is called the magnitude scaling and other is called the frequency scaling. And the magnitude scaling is the process of increasing all impedances in a network by a factor. If this is the original impedance, it is let's say 10 times increased. So that is called scaling. The frequency response remains unchanged. So in the magnitude scaling, the frequency remains or the frequency response remains constant. However, in the frequency scaling is the process of shifting the frequency response. If this was the original response, we can shift this to another value, like this is at 1 hertz, we can shift this to 5 megahertz, and in this case, the magnitude will remain the same. But the shifting the frequency response of a network up or down the frequency axis while leaving the impedance the same. Now generally, in questions, both of these are done together. That is the magnitude scaling and frequency scaling. So the amplitude is increased and frequency is also shifted. Now, why do we do scaling? In designing filters and resonance trackers, it is sometimes convenient to work with element values of 1 ohm, 1 hand even. So we the small values we can do calculations easily and then we can perform the values or transform the values to a realistic value of components which are available in the market so let's see from here now this is a simple values 2.5 ohm half and d2 so what we'll do we'll work with this and it's the frequency response will be something like this. Now, this we have done. Now we come to the actual values which are available in the market. So let's say this we want to change this to 5 kilo ohm. So what we have to do is multiply this value by a factor of 200. So not only this will multiply, we'll also multiply the inductor by 2000. But in case of a capacitor, we'll divide by 2000. So this will be a scaled circuit. And in this case, the frequency will remain same, but the magnitude will now change. So the magnitude, you can see it is 2.5 hertz, uh, sorry, 2.5 ohms. Now it has become 5 kilo ohm, the, the impedance. So that is the basic concept. Now here only magnitude scaling has been shown. And the question that we'll solve will do both magnitude and frequency scaling. So let's come to example 16.6. Scale the network shown in figure. So this is the original network by Km, which is the magnitude uh, amplification factor. 200 and kf is the frequency uh, amplification factor by 50 and then find z in for the scaled network so, so what he's saying that we got to scale this network and then find z in for the scaled network but the concept is uh, we'll see concept is not like this concept is that for this network we'll find Z in, and then we'll scale the Z in, the impedance will scale to the new network. Let's see here. So these are the factors given from here. And this is the formula. The resistance is multiplied by the magnitude factor. Inductor is multiplied by the magnitude factor and divided by the frequency factor, if it is present. Capacitor is divided by both the factors. So keep this in mind. Okay, so for this capacitor 0 0.05, uh, 
we can calculate the scaled value by using this formula. So the new capacitor or the scaled circuit will have 50 microfarad capacitor. Similarly, the inductor using this formula will have 200 milli Henry uh, uh, inductor. But now there is a problem with the dependent source. There is a dependent source in the circuit. In scaling the dependent source, only magnitude scaling need to be considered. And that too, it is not multiplication, rather it is division. So if the voltage was 0 0.2 V1, then the new value will be 0 0.2 V1 divided by Km factor, which is 20. So it will be 0 0.01 volt. So keep this mind for the controlled sources. So this is our new circuit, or this is our scaled circuit. So that is the first part of the question. Now the second part is to find Z in. So we could find Z in from here, but the, the purpose is killed. We want to say, we are saying that we will solve the circuit with easy values and then transform. So that is what we are going to do here. Let's see, this is the original circuit. This is the transform circuit. To find impedance Z in of the new network, we may work with either circuit, either this or this, but preferable is the one with the small values. Let's proceed by first finding the Z impedance of the unscaled network, that is this one, and then scaling the result. We need to, uh, for solving, we need to transform the circuit into S domain. And we know the formula from uh, time domain to S domain. So we'll convert this. Uh, L will be 0 0.5 S. And the, the formula is S time L. But there is a mistake here. It will be 0 0.05 S. And then capacitor is 1 over SC, so 1 over uh, C, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is okay, L is 0 0.5, so 0 0.5 S, and C is this value capacitor, so 1 over 0 0.5 S, which can also be written as 20 over S. So, this is our circuit in S domain this circuit in S domain. Now, just like uh, uh, the Thevenin's theorem, to find R equivalent, we use a test source, current source or voltage source, same we'll do here. We'll uh, apply a one ampere test source. So the circuit will now become like this. So this will solve to find uh, Z in. Okay, now Z in, we can find if we know V in. V in divided by this current, which is one ampere, will give us Z in. That means, first of all, we have to find V in. Okay, now V in we can find by several methods. Initially, I had tried this by the uh, source transformation method. Uh, I found the answer, but I, it, uh, it apparently looked to me that it will be uh, difficult for the students, but you can try this as well. So I opted for nodal analysis method, so that is simpler. Here we are calling a voltage V, and then this current I1, I2, and I3. So we know that uh, by KCL at the node, we have I1 entering and I2, I3 leaving. I1 is 1 ampere, I2 is, this is also current source, so 0.2 V1, and this current will be V divided by the impedance, so V divided by 0.5 S. Simplifying, we get equation number 1. Now we have to eliminate V. So we can, again, for the left loop, we can write a KVL equation, in terms of now this voltages, we go from here, minus V in, 
plus v1 and plus v equals 0. So from here v is equal to vn minus v1. So we put this value in equation number 1. So putting in equation 1, we get this equation. And now rearranging vn is given by this, which is equation number 2. So we were here. Now if you look at the circuit, V1 is current multiplied by this impedance. And current is 1, so 1 multiplied by 20 over S. So we'll replace these V1s by this value. So replacing and solving a couple of steps. I hope you can follow these steps. So this is V in. Now Z in, as we said, is V in over 1. So this V in divided by 1. Okay, there's a mistake here also. This will not be S squared. This will be 2S. When you solve, it will be 2S. Anyway, this is Z in. And now that we have found Z in for the first circuit, non-scale circuit, we can find Z for the scale circuit by using this formula. The formula is that first of all, we'll do the magnitude scaling. We multiply ZS or Z in that we found by the KM factor. And what we get is called Z dash S. And then we transform this or multiply this ZS by the frequency factor to get it scaled in the frequency. And our answer will be Z double dash S. And this is the final Z in that we want. Okay, so this was Z in. We have KM and uh, KF. We'll follow this. Z dash S is KM ZS, which is actually ZS is Z in and KM is 20. But using this, this is our Z dash S equation. And now we'll find Z double dash by using this formula S over KF, KF is 50. And solving this, go step by step. So this is our final value of Z double dash F. And this is the Z in of the scaled circuit. The same thing we can write from here, 1 over 5, 0.2 S square. Then uh, for minus 440 S and then 20,000 divided by S. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Uh, please let me know through your feedback. Thank you.